What's going on everybody? Welcome to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you guys everything you need to know about owning and operating a Rust server. Now we all know the typical locations where we can find loot all around our maps. We've got the standard trash piles that we see laying around the roads all around the map. And if you're skilled enough, you can get up on top of the dome and you can catch the military crates that are up there. And if you're even more top-notch skilled, you might even make it up on top of the launch site where you can get this massive stash of loot beside the downed helicopter. But doesn't it seem like there should be so many more different lootable containers all around the the map. We've got so many structures all over the island. They all have containers. They all have lockers. There's toilets. There's washing machines. There's things all over the place that are just there for decoration. Today I'm going to show you a way where you can turn this pile of empty cardboard boxes into an actual loot container. Or how about this desk next to the bubbler at the airfield? Or even this large generator that is situated just outside of Oxum's gas station. So the plugin that I'm talking about today is Static Lootables and it's available from the CodeFling website. Put a link to it in the video description down below. And don't make the mistake that I did when I was looking at this title, I read this as static loot tables. That's not what it is. It's static lootables. This makes it so that we can take static entities within the game and turn them into a lootable item. So if you go to the link in the video description down below, it's going to take you to the CodeFling website directly to static lootables. And of course, you're going to see here that this is a premium plugin. However, it's at an incredibly cheap, cheap price at $8.23 US. But on this video, I'm going to show you a way that you can actually get this plugin for free. More details about that later. But before we actually get into all the details, this plugin was developed by Raul. So a huge shout out goes out to Raul. I've been playing around with this plugin for a couple of days. I definitely like it and you've definitely put in the wrench time on this. So first things first, on the page for static lootables, you're going to see a couple of videos along the top here. I fully encourage you to go check out those videos, but we are going to go over basically all of the same stuff on this video. One thing to make a note of right off the bat, this plugin definitely depends on image library. I suspect, however, that that's something that's going to change in the very near future because more and more plugins are getting away from requiring image library, which is absolutely fantastic. Image library was just kind of a band they'd fix. It provided a solution that we needed at the time, but we now have a better way of dealing with images. As you would expect, of course, there are permissions related to this plugin, but don't worry about that. We'll get into those once we're actually in game. And the rest of the documentation is incredibly clear. So I fully encourage you to go check out all of the documentation before you decide if this plugin is right for you. Highly customizable and intuitive system. And that is absolutely true. It is, but you're going to see a little bit more about that once we're actually in game. There's a zone manner inclusion exclusion feature to this plugin. So if you want specific zones to be lootable in all of these different static items or not, you can make it both ways. There's also a hacking system involved with this plugin. And I actually struggled for a little bit on this one because I couldn't on my own test server find an actual hackable loot item. But I very quickly realized that I don't think there is actually in the default loot table that you get, you actually have to create one, which I did. And I'll show you how that all works. When you first download and install this plugin, it's going to generate its own loot table. However, there's going to be nothing actually on it. So what I suggest you do is go to the actual documentation page and Raul has actually put on there a loot table.json that you need to actually put into your server. I'll redo the steps here in a couple of minutes, but I've already done it. These are all the different lootable items that you're going to find in your server that can be added to this plugin. And the rest of the documentation is just a ton of information about how this plugin actually works, the different settings that you have control over when it comes to your new lootables, and a whole bunch of definition settings that I fully encourage you to get yourself familiarized with. And at the very bottom here, you're going to see in installation instructions. And as you can see here, this is an incredibly easy plugin to install four steps and you're done. You're ready to actually start playing around with it. So if I were installing this plugin for the very first time, in fact, I've actually gone through and deleted everything out of my test server. So it is going to actually respond the same way for me as it will for you. So let's just drag and drop the actual .cs file into our plugins folder. We'll do a quick reload of static lootables on our console. We'll let it generate everything that it needs to generate. And then if we go over to our configuration folder, you'll see that the plugin has actually generated a configuration file, which is great. So let's just delete this one for now. And we're going to bring in the one that we downloaded from the documentation page, static lootables.json, just like that. And then we're going to reload the plugin again so that it's grabbing from that new information. Now, all of that being said, I've never actually looked at the default configuration file that the plugin actually generates on its own. So I actually don't know. I just took the suggestions from Raul and used the configuration file that he provides on the website. Obviously, if you want to mess around with it a little bit more than what I'm going to on this video, I would fully encourage you to do that. All right, now that we're in game, we already have the plugin installed. We've already uploaded the new configuration file that Raul provides from the documentation page. What's the first thing that we have to do? Of course, we have to deal with permissions. So I'm only going to be granting the permissions to be able to edit this plugin 
to the group called admin, obviously. So we're going to do slash perms group admin, just like that, as you see in chat right now. And that's going to bring up the permissions manager. And we're going to go into static lootables and we're going to grant the admin permission as well as the editor permission. And now that we're done with permissions, we can go around and start exploring what this plugin has actually done to our server. So let's go up to this electrical box. And as you can see there, it now prompts us to actually loot this container, or in this case, it's unscrewed. So we just interact with it like we normally would. And there happens to be no loot in there at this time but let's keep searching around there's a garbage bag right here oh look there's garbage in there imagine that and all of these items can be changed in the configuration file that we just uploaded check for liquids if we had a water container we could take that water out of there into our container there's another electrical panel anyways you get the point let's go inside and as you can see now we can actually interact with this cash register which we were never able to do before so as you can see this one is locked so we need to actually break this item so there's a health bar there as you're doing damage to it and then as soon as you're done damaging it the loot comes up and then we can actually loot that container if we go into the bunk little staff room back here as you can see we've got the lockers that we've always had but now we can actually interact with them and now what's interesting here is the lockers that are actually locked or closed in this case are locked and you have to break them open however as you can see this middle one is open so we can actually loot that without having to cause it any damage and we can just damage it just like we did the cash register outside and boom there we go another trash bag down here of course there's rotten food in there we've got the filing cabinet down down here same thing we can loot all of these different things that we were never able to loot before this typewriter we can search the documents obviously there's no use for paper anymore in the game so you would want to change that on your configuration file and we can search this desk but we have to damage it first and there we go we get another green card as well as the one that was up here so that's all very cool tons of different items all over your map that are now static lootables. So let's say we want to start editing some of these loot tables. For example, I don't know why you would want to provide rotten food inside the trash bags. However, I do see the point that it only makes sense that that's what would be in a garbage bag. But we could make this container make a little bit more sense for our players. So if we want to change the loot table for any of these new static lootables that we now have on our server, in chat we just type slash sl edit no spaces. And you get a response saying, okay, you've enabled edit mode. And then we can go up to that item. And once we're looking at it you can see there's a couple of different options there so if we press the use button by default that's e or the reload button default that's r it takes you to two different locations to do two different things so because we actually want to change the items that might spawn inside this garbage bag we're going to hit e so that we can edit the lootable so as you can see here this is a gui that you've probably never seen before but it gives you a ton of different information so what is the prefab that we're actually looking at in this case it's the trash bag what is the interaction that we want to use and there's a couple of arrow keys you can swipe back and forth to decide what type of the interaction is so when the player goes up to that item what does that interaction overlay look like that comes up the container size all of i mean all of this stuff is fairly self-explanatory the one thing that i can't get an explanation on so far but the assumption that i'm making is this beta persistent so what i think that means is if we toggle this to enabled this will make this process persistent across wipes. I don't know that for sure. And the easiest way for me to test that without actually asking the developer, of course, the easiest way for me to test that would be to set this up over a wipe and see if these changes that I make to the trash bag go away over a wipe cycle. So that part I don't know yet, but I'm assuming that that's the case. If we click on this rule section right here, it's going to get into something that I would consider like an advanced level usage of this plugin. But if you go into the rules, you're going to see that it's fairly self-explanatory. So just go in and play around with it and decide what's going to work best for your server if you want to edit what is going to spawn in this trash bag we're going to go into the content so as you can see here we've got a whole bunch of different burnt items and rotten food and all this other stuff so if we wanted to take all of that stuff out we just click on the x's just as you can see there and if you want to start adding new items to it of course you click on the green add button and then we can search for items in game so if we just do a search for meats of course we can select raw deer meat or raw bear meat whatever you want as you can see the searching system is intuitive and it definitely works quite well if we wanted to put a lock on this container of course we can do that just by simply clicking on this create button next to the lock and then what is the health of that lock going to be by default it's 250 and you can change that lock to whatever it is that you want it to be and now because we've added that lock with the hit health of 500 of course we'd have to do damage to this trash bag in order to get what's inside of it this is essentially the same thing that happens on the cash register but that's done for us by default
So once we've broken that lock, now we can go inside and the food that we have in here is no longer rotten. It's now pulling from the loot table that we've now created for the trash bag. So we're just gonna go back into this editor here. We're gonna actually remove this lock and instead of a lock, we're gonna do a hack instead. So we just click on the button to create a hack for this item. And this is where we get to define the parameters of the hack. So the wait time in seconds and then how long before this code is gonna reset. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. So the wait time in seconds is how long the hack actually takes. And once you've successfully hacked an item, you will be given a code that will allow you access to whatever lootable this is. In this case, it's the trash bag. So let's do a 10 second hack that resets after five minutes. So essentially we're adding a hack that's gonna take 10 seconds to actually accomplish. And once we've accomplished that hack, it will last for five minutes or 300 seconds. So let's click on save. Let's go back in chat and do slash SL edit to get out of the mode for static lootables. And now, as you can see there, instead of just the search item that it was before, now we have an actual hack prompt telling us that this lootable actually needs to be hacked. So we just go up to the item and press on our use button by default, that's E, and it will start hacking this item. And because we set it to 10 seconds, obviously the hack will take 10 seconds to do. And as soon as it's successful, you'll end up with a note in your inventory that gives you a code that you can now use for this lootable. So 4849 is my temporary code that's gonna last for the five minutes or 300 seconds that we set up in the editor. So now for the next five minutes, we can come back to this bag and keep checking it for loot. So now once we have this successful hack, we have the code, instead of going up to that item again and hitting E, you wanna hit R or reload, and it's gonna bring up this prompt for you to actually put in that code. So it was 4849 and we can click on the check mark. And if there was actually loot in this container, we could pull that loot out. And we could do that same thing again for the next five minutes until that code expires. Now the other option that comes up when we're in the SL editor, I'm just going to go back into editing mode here, is if you hit R instead of E, it's gonna bring you into the settings editor. So as you can see here, we can change all of the different parameters about how the plugin actually functions, the different terminologies that it uses, different multipliers, different health multipliers, some GUI specific stuff. You can go in here and play around with this. You can change what you need to change if you need to make something look a little bit different for your server, some different terminologies or whatever it happens to be. The nice part about having these two editors directly in game is we never have to go into the actual configuration file on our server. All of the information is done directly on the GUIs. You can, of course, go into the actual config file. There's nothing wrong with that, but you definitely don't have to. So what if we came across an item on your server that you wanted to turn into a lootable item, but isn't currently? So for example, if we go up to this truck, there's no interaction that comes with this rusted out truck. Well, we can change that simply by doing the same command again. So the SL edit, and we can now interact with this truck and we can add a loot table to this rusted out truck, exactly like we did with the trash bag. Or same thing, like I said at the beginning of the video, this large generator that's just outside of Oxum's gas station, we can add this to the lootables and we can make it so that when people come up to this item, they can loot the items that are inside of it. Totally up to you. But by default, I don't think any of the large generators across the map have anything added to it. You would have to add this to it manually. Just as I was playing around inside this cage here, I just recognized you can actually make this chain link fence a lootable item. What else can we do? Can we make this tire a lootable item? Of course we can. This is amazing. The amount of things that we can, like what else, what, like gas pump A, let's go in here and have a look. Oh, it's already set up. So this one was already set up, low grade fuel, that makes sense. But yeah, the chain link fence, that's crazy. I can't believe that Raul gave us this much control over all of the different items. Let's check this wire spool right here. Sure enough, we can add items to that wire spool too. I'm not going to lie. This is pretty badass stuff. Substation, sure enough. What about this wall? Yeah, why not? Can we add items to this wall? Really? We can add stone to this wall. So like, let's go in here and let's change this value to 5,000 just so that it's crazy. And the spawn chance is two out of five. Let's change this to five out of five. So this wall is 100% gonna spawn stones if we go up and interact with this. So let's back out of this, let's save that. Let's get out of the edit mode, which is the same command as before, slash SL edit. And now if we go up to this wall, sure enough, there it is between one and five thousand stones are inside this wall and it's only that section of wall too it's not the entire wall so just this section right here which means we can make each individual section of wall have different items and i'm just i'm flabbergasted by this as i'm recording this video this plugin is getting cooler and cooler well apparently i can go on and on about this plugin so i'm going to stop right now i just also wanted to let you know while you're not in sl edit mode if you just go up to an item whatever it happens to be and middle mouse click it's going to tell you in chat what the actual 
asset name is for whatever it is that you're looking at. In this case, this is barricade sandbags, and this will be the hobo barrel. Sure enough, we can just middle mouse click on whatever it is that we're looking at, and it's going to tell us what that asset name is. It's it's so cool. All right, so apparently I can go on and on about this plugin. I'm I'm learning things as I'm recording this video. It is like top notch. He's done a really really nice job on this. So I want you guys to head over to Code Fling. I want you to check out Static Lootables. At the very beginning of the video, I told you that I was going to tell you about a way that you can get this plugin for free. And the way in which I'm going to do that is by giving you an opportunity to win a $25 gift card usable on CodeFling.com. So in order for you to enter for your chance to win a $25 gift card from CodeFling.com, you have to be a member of my Discord. So discord.srtbull.com. Make sure you go through the validation process. Click on the green check mark. It's super simple. And then go into the giveaways channel right at the very top there. You're going to see a new giveaway. This one that you see on the screen right there, that's an old giveaway, but there will be a new one there. And all you have to do is react to the giveaway and you're automatically entered into the giveaway. I'm going to run this giveaway for 48 hours. So after the 48 hours, the bot is automatically going to select a winner. It's going to notify you. It's going to notify me. And then I'll send you a DM via Discord with your digital gift card for codefling.com. And you never know, depending on how many people actually react to this post in my giveaways channel, I might actually do two giveaways this weekend. We'll see what happens. All right, that does it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Center time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.